I looked at Father, I go, what does any of that mean to you? Because I have no idea. Wayne told me to say that. <laughs> I just turned around and walked away. Okay. So I went to the show. The place was mobbed. I mean, packed. And I, I saw this poor consultant in the kitchen looking like she wanted to shoot herself. Okay. And I'm like looking at her and I'm like going, wow. This is like total chaos. You know, I'm like, what's, you know, what's, what's happening here? So I walked in and I was so happy it was cookware. Because trust me, me and lingerie, no one's happy. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a one and a half year old, I was good with pampers. Okay? <laughs> I was actually a huggy gal, just saying. <laughs> and so I'm watching this poor woman trying to get her act together and control. There had to have been, I'm not exaggerating, 35, 40 people in this room. It was so new in Connecticut. It was only a year old at that time. You know what I'm saying? So we, I went in, I'm watching the show. And yes. Hard to believe, I was that person. I was heckling the, the shit out of this poor woman. It, but I thought of it as constructive criticism. <laughs> and those of you who know me and love me, you know that that's what I say when I'm telling you, you're wrong. <laughs> uh, no, but seriously, I'm watching this poor woman, and I'm thinking to myself, how was she not having fun doing this? Because all I could think of, like, this is a blast. Okay, and not the show itself, it sucked. Okay, but the concept was brilliant. I'm like going, why didn't I think of this? Right, okay. So I went to. I'm sorry, they're recording. She quit. And oh, picked sorry, up sorry. Customers. I didn't tell you were. Sorry, friend. No, sorry, so, sorry. Yeah, you gotta. I'm me sorry, it's not me. It's <coughs> me do it. So we I went, and I'm watching her, and she looked absolutely miserable. I felt so bad for her, I really did. So she was saying things, and I would jump in saying, could I offer a little bit of you know, help with that? You know, well, there's another way you can do that. And she's looking at me like, you know, if there was a knife close enough to her, I would, right here, right there. Or here. Yeah, pretty much. So, um, so I'm watching her, and I'm watching, and now picture this. I'm sitting there, my friend Rhonda's next to me, and she's doing this. <laughs> she is beating me. I go, what are you doing? And she's like, this would be perfect. Do you want to stay home with Alexander? I go, no, I don't. <laughs> the novelty wore off about six months in. <laughs> that, that's really good, sir. I love my children. All right, so, so I went, you know, and I'm watching her, and I'm thinking, I'm not, no, I said, I'm sure Rhonda, I finally said to her, Rhonda, this is why I became a chef. So I would be in the back of the house, and I would not have to talk to people. Have you heard me speak? You know, and I can't hear, so I read a lot of lips. So I'm like going, that might be a problem. You know, so that's why I don't ever try it, people. I know exactly what you're saying. That's why I give everybody a laugh folder. So I say, listen, if you want to say something mean about me, hold it up. <laughs> because if you whisper, I can read your lips. Okay? Um, so she goes, no, you'd be great at this. You know, really, you're made to do this. I go, I do not speak in public. I do not do that. Okay? Then I'm watching the show and I'm thinking, okay, anybody can be better than this. <laughs> and I say that with all the love in my heart because this woman is now one of my dearest friends in the world. I love her to death, Denise, who sponsored me. And um, so we're watching the show and I'm, you know, writing and writing and writing. And so after being told, but remember, this was, I'm, I'm coming on my 25th anniversary with Paper Trap. So this was 25 years ago, and I spent $240. Oh my God. Wow. Okay, but I did the husband plan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which meant I gave Denise a certain amount, and then I said to, to Rhonda, put that on your card, the check's in the mail, okay? Because I had to go home and convince my husband how wonderful I was and to give me the extra $200. Okay. So Rhonda goes, I'm with you. You sign for me and tell Wayne that, you know, so it's going to be good. So I told Louie I paid for Rhonda because they were struggling. <laughs> said to Wayne, oh, I paid for free hours, they're having issues. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Just a tip to increase your sales. <laughs> All right, uh, can we find me a napkin or a shot and a beer? Anything? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here, Again, here, here. just so we're noted, he had a seat, he had a microphone, he had air conditioning. There's, there's a lot of green curtains. There's a lot of green curtains behind you, Hugh. Uh, well, felt curtains. Yeah, that's gonna help. <laughs> okay. Do you want a chair? Here's what's not good. Here's what's really funny though about this whole story. Okay. 
I go up to give Denise my order. And I said to her, because Rhonda at this point had convinced me, what do I have to lose by asking the woman a question? Because I had made up my mind. Like anything, anybody can do this, obviously. <laughs> okay? And Denise knows this and she owned it because, I mean, I mean, come on, she got the golden egg here. Okay? She got the golden ticket. Right? So I go up to her and I said, um, can you give me information about how you got started? And uh, she goes, I'm, I'm sorry, what? I said, can anybody do this? And I asked her to me, I swear to you, goes, I'm not sure. <laughs> she goes, this is how new Denise was. <coughs> so I said, okay, well, how did you get started? She said, I answered the ad in the back of Parents Magazine. Oh and if you ask Randy and Sue Neon, Willis, who Neon, were there Neon, at the same Neon. time, that's what wow. they did. They advertised yeah. in Parents You're Magazine. Right, right Randy? Oh. Okay, so I said, can I answer the same ad? She goes, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, do you like me? To, do I have to call somebody? She goes, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm like, wow, you're a huge help. <laughs> so, so I said, could you look into it and give me a call tomorrow? She goes, sure. Okay. That's what you're sure about. Didn't call me the next day. So I'm like, wait and think, okay, she's got to call somebody. She told me they were from Chicago. She wasn't sure. Could have been Chicago. There's more than one. <laughs> day two goes by. Still no call. Now, she didn't give me a business card. Her name wasn't stamped on any, any oh, of the information. No, 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 no catalog. OK? So finally, I called Rhonda. I go, does your friend Lori have the consult, you know, the woman's name who did the show? She goes, yeah, I'll call you back. So she called me back. I call her. And she goes, yes, good news. You can do this. I said to her, did you lose my number? <laughs> she goes, oh, I didn't think you were serious. Oh. <laughs> now remember, she had only been doing it like four or five months, so you got to understand, you know, she hadn't done a huge amount by, at that time either. Then when I found out she was a mechanical engineer, it explained everything. everything. <laughs> yep. It explained absolutely everything. I am married to an engineer, and let me tell you, okay? Those engineers without a spec sheet are useless. Yes. <laughs> My parameter on an apple. So I went ahead and I said, well, you know, what do I do now? And um, she goes, well, let me find out exactly. I said, can we meet somewhere? I'm like, I'm, I recruited myself. When somebody says, ask me, I literally recruited myself. So I met with her, and my Alexander and her, her older daughter, Danielle, were the same age. So we met at Hojo, Howard Johnson, okay? And we sat there. I was interviewing her. Like, she, I'm not sure you're good enough to be my director. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> not to be mean, but, you know, we got to work on this. <laughs> we're having a communication fail, okay? So I sign up. Now, back then, back in the old days, and the only people who are going to remember that are going to be Sue and Randy, because they were there with me. And, me. and you, that's right, that's right. You, oh my God, we are that old. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they had the Quick Start program. Remember that? And you had three months. <coughs> oh, excuse me, you had three months. The Super Starter. Remember that? Yes. Okay, so you had to, you, if you around. sold a certain amount your first month, you got this bonus package. You, now you get money. Sell a certain amount in your second month, you get another bonus packet. Do it again your third month, you get a bonus packet and another big bonus for doing that. People love to tell the story, okay, how Friel Yan, who turned out to be the number one seller in the history of this company, okay, and a lot of other companies, to be honest with you, because no one at that point had ever sold as much as I had in direct sales, okay, all right. They love to tell the story that I did not make my second month super starter. <laughs> <laughs> so how many of you did not qualify in your first 30 days? Be honest about it. No big freaking deal. Okay? There's not going to be an indicator whatsoever how great you can be. <laughs> because if an overweight girl with a funny name and a lift from another country can come here and set records, so can you. Okay. All right. So I went ahead. I started. I did not.
to this day, 25 years coming on, not one family member has ever done a show for me. That's not one. Because that's beneath us. We don't do this. We are not sent, we, you know, we, don't, we don't sell. I go, yeah, but we're camel traders. This is the same budget. <laughs> I go, how are we not salespeople when my father owned a chain of, of you know, supermarkets and, yes. you know, all these businesses, and my uncle owned every liquor store in a three-state radius, and I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? We don't sell, okay? Well, my father, God rest his soul, his word always was, he's the father of five daughters, okay? Wow. And that's why we had to leave the old country. <laughs> <laughs> we were very happy over there, very comfortable. We were really good at ducking. So we were safe, okay? But we were five women to an Arabic man, okay? So he went to our priest, yes, we are Catholic, they have them over there. <laughs> they have Christians in the Middle East, who knew? <laughs> so we, <laughs> so my father, we come in, but my father never treated us that like, over oh, girls, we have to be, you know, whatever. He goes, I don't care what any of you choose to do in your life as long as you're the best at it. And that's always been an adage that stayed in every one of my sister's brain. We are always going to be the best at whatever we're choosing to do. So I said, all right. Now, did I have any intention that I was going to become the number one seller? Look at me, hell no. <laughs> but I have a very addictive personality. Yeah. And I became addicted to pamper chat. Again, passion, obsession. Mm -hmm. Dangle a carrot in front of me and get the hell out of my way. Yeah. Yeah. I will run you down. <laughs> I will be very polite about it. Yeah. I'll be even very gracious about it, but you're out of my way. <laughs> you're holding me back from that golden carrot. Bye bye. Okay? So, that is so true. But I did not know that about myself until I became a consultant. Mm. Somebody asked my husband years later after I was doing, you know, and then when, when I did, the, I got my first Circle of Honor award, which was a year after I started, I got the Circle of Honor. I went in and they were interviewing Louie, and he said, Louie, you know, what do you love about Paper Chef? What has it done for your family? He goes, it's made my wife the woman I knew she could always be. Aww. Because contrary to what you're looking at, this woman standing here and having no problem talking to 100 people, I literally would be in the corner and not talking to anybody. One-on-one, -on -one, I'm amazing. <laughs> talking in front of people, no, the only talking I ever did was when I was, you know, you know running my brigade in the kitchen, because I was the head chef. So, you know, I say jump, they go how high, how fast, and where? <laughs> and I would like that from all of you. <laughs> uh, yes, chef. Thank you. Yes, chef. And uh, actually, Louis said that one. Never mind. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> That's the wrong church direction that. altogether. Uh, but no, seriously, though, okay, I was really not, I was literally, contrary to those of you who know me, and, you know, I was a wallflower. I truly was. You know, because first of all, where I was raised, you know, you were spoken to, you spoke when you were spoken to, you know, you were a woman, so you had to know your place, and so I was just always very respectful, so I would never, but seriously, so Louis loves that, he knew this woman was there somewhere, okay? So I started, I made my first month, I blame my lack of achieving the second month on my director, because she didn't tell me you could hold things over. <laughs> so I sold like three, four thousand my first month, but I only put in like eleven hundred. I didn't have to put in twelve fifty. You know, oh. Oh. but she didn't tell me to that hold over. Great okay, and then you know, and then I finally, and then she realized by my third month, and yeah, there, she's on her own. <laughs> this was April when I started. In October, I'll never forget this because you know how we all have moments in our life that change you in a certain way, Louis. Myself and Alexander were out, you know, you know how you need to go out with the kids, your husband to a mall, you're window shopping, right? And so we saw this entertainment center, like they played records or something. What's it called? The stereo. Okay. And it was you know, pretty cool for back then, you know, not a CD player or whatever the hell we have today, okay? I'm not really good with remotes. I really not. No. Um, <laughs> but when you listen to country music the whole way here, I did not plan that. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. You when know, the Christian music came out first, that was the best. Yeah, I didn't plan that either. <laughs> <laughs> so my husband and I were, were looking, okay, and Louis goes, well, you know, not this month, honey. Well, it's $1,500. 
the sack. Wow. You know, you know, goes, not this month, honey, you know, let's save up for it. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. You know, because my husband always, whenever he said no to something, the minute we could afford it, it just arrived. I never had to ask again. He's still like that, he's amazing. So we had been living in a beautiful townhouse, you know, community, and we had just moved into a house. And but our mail was still coming to the old place. So I was off to a show. I said to Louie, I'll stop and pick up the mail out of the mailbox, okay? So I picked up the check. Of course, this is when they mailed them to you. That's right. right. They did that in the days of the horse and carriage. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And I opened it. I'm like, holy crap. That was a good month. Mm -hmm. You know, so this was like my August paycheck. And, you know, hey, back then, $1,500 in August as a paycheck yeah. is that bad when you're not a director. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so I uh, go to my show. Remember, no cell phones back then. We're talking 25 years ago. And so I, Louie didn't know. I come home. And um, so I got my paycheck. I, he goes, oh, great. How do you do? I said, look. He goes, well, I guess we can't afford it. OK, then. You know? And he was like, now he's like going, yeah, you need to quit your job. And I'm like, oh, no, I can't do that. You want to know what I was doing? Now, I studied at La Barrette in Paris, the Cordon Bleu, and the CIA, the Culinary Institute of America. I am a classically trained chef. And I was working third shift at Howard Johnson. Yeah. Oh, so wow. I could be home during the day with my son. OK? I'm like, well, I can't quit that. What do you think I was making an hour 25 years ago? Right? And so he goes, oh, yeah, you're done there. Yeah. yeah. And um, so I said, all right. OK. So, um, so that was. That following month, I took the number one spot for the month. Do you want to know what I sold? I started in April. That October, do you want to know what I sold that month? Can you guess? $10,000. $13,000. Wow. The company was like, who the hell is she? What doing? the hell is that? Who is this girl with the funny name? What is she doing? <laughs> you know, and they were, they, they were like, they, no one had ever done that before. The highest that was sold ever in a month ranged at the very high end, near 7,000. Wow. Okay? That was the only time. That was Cindy Morazes who did that. Okay? And then I came in. Do you want to know? These guys will vouch for me. They're sitting right here in the audience. I held on to that number one spot for five years straight before somebody took the number one spot. Wow. Okay? And I almost got divorced. <laughs> <laughs> because I became obsessed. Mm -hmm. Now, back then, we had to mail the orders in. Oh so gosh. you had to time it. You drove it in, Randy. What do you care about? Okay, so <laughs> we had to mail it in. It had to be post dated. And it had to arrive by the last business day, not the day of the weekend if it fell on a la It had to be the last business day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one day, I told Louie, you have to mail the, all the shows in. Uh, and we did them all with pen and tally, and you're spent 34 hours literally looking for a nickel. Because yeah. yeah. they had to balance. <laughs> okay? And he goes, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. He goes, this is crazy. You're becoming overly obsessed. You're not paying attention to Alice and I. You're, you've gone fat crap crazy. Okay. And I said, you have to send them in. I've got to be number one. I cannot be number one. What do you mean? I have to be. I have to be. It's got to be done. He goes, why? Well, that's a stupid question. You know why? You know, I was, I was livid. We were fighting. And my husband and I never fought. Never fought. And these guys and I go, fine. But if I don't get the number one spot, I swear to God, Louie, I've got 50 pounds on you, I will pound you. <laughs> so the fact that Louie is still here, I did by the skin of my teeth, not really, if I beat the other person by four grand, but still. <laughs> but this is where I got obsessed, and this is where we're going to get serious for a minute. You can have all the passion in the world, but both, like both Michael and Grace said today, Think about the quality of life you want for yourself. Think about it. I mean, honestly, like we were told we would never have any children either. Okay? We were married 11 years when we were blessed with Alexander. All right? And I thought I had a tumor. And I took 104 pregnancy tests. <laughs> That's half the time I was pregnant. <laughs> 
pregnancy test the day I delivered, okay? Because I swear to God, I thought they were Yale, lying to me at Yale, okay? And because when you're told your entire life it's never gonna happen, it was a miracle, it was truly a miracle. And, and I'm thinking to myself, he's right. We worked so hard and we, our answers were prayer, and I've got you know, prayer, prayer, prayer. Our prayers were answered, we have a beautiful child, and I was only obsessed with the fact that I was number one because people were like, oh my God, you're her. Oh my God, can I touch you uh, for a fee? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can buy a pot holder. <laughs> I never understood, tell me why you guys do this, okay? Why do you come up to somebody who's a success and you feel if you rub them, it's gonna rub off on you? <laughs> it's only creepy. <laughs> it's only <laughs> odd. Uh, it really is. I got followed into a restroom. Not just into the restroom, into the stall. <laughs> and if you guys don't believe me, ask anybody who knew me at that time. Wasn't it ridiculous? It was so ridiculously ridiculous. It was hysterical. And then we were asked to do a workshop together, so I forgave her. We did, we did. But the thing of it is though, guys, you, this is, you have to find that balance. And like Michael, I homeschooled my children up until high school, okay, while I worked. And then, you know, I know you're shocked. She actually taught her children something? Yes. <laughs> I am very bright. You know, they got into some high-end schools, you know, Stanford, Harvard, NYU, okay, Emerson, RPI, MIT. Just oh. bragging. How many children did you end up with? I have two, but they're very smart. <laughs> <laughs> two boys. I have two boys. I have Alexander David and Adam George. And they're eight years apart. Uh, the Chinese are not as quick as they look. For me, it really, the ego got totally out of control. And I will, it's hard not to. Michael will vouch for this. When Michael, and they don't know anything about you. They don't know who you are. They don't know your history. They don't know your backstory. They just figured, what is she doing? Instead of asking me, what are you doing that's working for you? Okay, what little bit of advice? I would get questions like, you know, how do you do it? What motivates you? So finally I got a little bit to the point where I said, you know, I want to know honest to God, truthfully, this is between you and me and the lamppost, what motivates me? Fear. Down, right, black, fear. Because I like my life. I like what I'm able to do. I like the fact that I was able to put my children through college without them coming out with a nickel of debt. I like the fact that my house is paid for. I like the fact that a month ago I was able to go pay cash for a $40,000 car. Okay? I like that. I lorded it over the car version. <laughs> yeah. I'm here to buy two cars, brand new, 2017, limited, please, if you do not mind. And I will be paying cash, so give me a deal. I kept Louie in the car because he can't bargain. Now, but do you think the money is really the reason you stay? Let's be honest. You know why you stay? You all joined Pamper Chef for a different reason. All of us did. You join for a reason, you stay for a million others. Okay, so let's say Suzanne joined because she wanted to stay home with the kids. Okay, then the kids, she decided to stay on. Then the kids now have activities, which are almost like a community college tuition for some of you. Anybody a dance mom? Anybody a hockey mom? All right, anybody a cheerleader? You know, you know who you are. I mean, most of you women spend more time on a field than a farmer. Okay? Hell to the no. My kids were not born with a single athletic bone in their body. Thank you, Jesus. You're lucky. Okay, yeah, I am lucky. Because this butt don't sit on no bleacher. <laughs> it's very delicate. Just say it. But you do. So now you've got to pay for all these activities. Because would you, if you possibly could make the money, would you say no to that child if they want to pursue something? No. Okay? 
and the children are getting older now. Now they care about what they look like and they don't care about what you think. <laughs> so you want them to feel good about themselves. You want them to dress nicely, but you don't want them, you know. So you, I think you stay, then all of a sudden, okay, now I want to put them in private school. Then I want to put them in college. I want to move to a bigger house because we only have a two-bedroom <coughs> house and Adam came along. And the drawer got very snug for him after a few months. <laughs> 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 to move they moved into a bigger house okay and then you start you know life keeps changing for you yeah now let's talk about changes you all heard grace's story about how there's bumps in the road you all heard michael's story about how the horrible bumps in the road i'm going to add right to it because seriously those of you who know me or know a little bit about my history i've been to hell and back so many times i went there came back and went again okay i mean i i, I got hit by a semi Okay, and by the grace of God, Adam was in the car with me, but for the blessings of the angels, and I think my father were with him yeah. because he didn't get a scratch. I was in the hospital forever. I had to go to rehab facilities like Michael did. I had to learn to walk again, okay? This was right before December. I still sold 9,000 that month in December from my hospital room in the rehab, okay? I lost my father, okay? I lost a child. There's a lot of things that happen in your life. Then you get these consultants. I've got a hangnail. <laughs> Hurts like a bitch. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't work for the next two months. <laughs> okay, like, I mean, but am I lying here? How many of you have had a day where you're like, this is just so not worth it? and you want to walk away, right? You're, you'd be lying if you did, right, Kimmy? You would be lying absolutely if you did not tell me that's the honest to God truth. This is not a get rich scheme. This is plain hard work. You need your heart into it. You need your determination into it. You need to see what's at the end of that tunnel. Okay, hopefully it's not a train coming up. Right? <laughs> But it isn't a train, hop on and go for the ride, okay? Because you're gonna get there, all right? I mean, look at me. If you did not know who I was, totally oblivious to who I was, and I walked on and they told you this is your first million dollar, two million dollar, and three million dollar consultant, would you have picked me out of a crowd? No. 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 This is why I rarely, if ever, wear a name tag when I go to any event. Because you, we have this image like, you know, you like who would be the perfect herself. consultant? There's no such thing. None of us are perfect. God did not create perfect human beings. What do you learn from perfect? Nothing. Nothing. Okay, so am I perfect? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a package. <laughs> I'm such a bundle, you don't even know. But no, sir, let's talk about the sales though, how you're gonna get to where you wanna be. Okay, so we've had it, no. You think these bumps in the road, my motto, what is my motto I always live by? Life happens when you're making plans. You make plans and God laughs. Right? Good chance. And you love how God's got a really sick sense of humor. <laughs> or God says to you, I give you, because you're strong, you can handle it. I go, you got me mixed up with somebody else. Over there. <laughs> <laughs> you need to check your database. It ain't me. <laughs> okay. All right. Now. What made me get to that point besides drive and ambition? And how many of you really honestly never thought you were a really overly ambitious or a competitive person before you joined Pamper Chef? Be honest, right? You're not, right? But you would rather die than miss a trip, right? Yeah. Especially a top level trip. Oh yeah. Because yeah. Oh, yeah. you want to lord that over people's heads, don't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just came back from Mediterranean cruise. Yeah, whatever. That's right. Okay, because that's, that's exactly what it should be. Yeah, whatever. Because not all of you are here working because you want to sell 10, 15, 20,000 a month. How many of you are working because you want to pay for your daughter's dance class? Or your son, who judges, right? How many of you just want to make that car payment? Yeah. Now, how many of you, and this is where honesty is going to come into play again, how many of you sit in your team meeting? And you're here, and let's see, how many of you have a team and there's always that one superstar? Like where it becomes a given, 
Like, oh, Steve's number one again. Big shocker. <laughs> Just like her. to have a Michael Reeves, a Grace Bott, a Brown Ann, a Kim Hogan, oh, any of us Brown. as in your group? Yeah. It's it fight. Yeah. Where are you, Jim? Yeah. But it's, it's really true, though. But stop yourself right there. Mm -hmm. Did you want to sell 10,000 this month? Right. Did you want to recruit seven people in a month? Love to sell them. No. Unless you did, then you have a right to be pissed <laughs> at yourself. <laughs> she did not take any, he or she did not take anything away from you. Right. You lost nothing because you never had it. But if you're happy with your own goal and you're meeting them, you are a major success. <laughs> Major recognition, if ever. Okay, I do it in such a way because I don't want anybody to go. Oh, Sharice so got number one again. <laughs> 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 she did, by the way. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, but you know, what, though, you know, you know you, the thing about it, though, you want to get cheered on, and we're very proud of what you do. But as long as I'm going to be happy, if Grace says to me. Really, I just want a thousand dollar paycheck because that'll be the final payment on our trip to Disney or whatever it is, right? And she does it. Now that's what I want to celebrate at a meeting because she met her goal and she's ecstatic. Now, if you know Brian comes to me and he goes, "Yes, I'm planning on selling thirty-two thousand this month," <laughs> you know, and we actually did, we competed one month and I won, by the way. Just saying. <laughs> Not by much, but. She is. It was enough to say I won, Brian. <laughs> no, I wouldn't want to eat it, but he, we, we, we do that. But, but nobody cheers the other on more. Because we know each other. We're friends. We're family. We know our backstory. I know when he's sick. He knows when I'm sick. I knew when Michael was hurt. Everybody knew when Michael was hurt because he was bragging it all over the country. Like <laughs> <laughs> the hospital bed, making us feel bad. Come on. Now. But no, seriously. So always be proud of what you're doing. No. But what if you're leaving this weekend and you're like going, you know what, I need to up my game. Mm -hmm. And you do nothing with it. You've got amazing training this weekend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You don't do it. We can't make you do it. Right. We're not going home with you as much as you'd like us to. No. <laughs> yes, you are. We are. <laughs> <laughs> are you mad? <laughs> Yeah, All right, let's do some really serious training here, though, because um, I got, oh, I was saying about the bumps in the road. Um, 2014, okay? Oh, Normal, ordinary day. I didn't, I got sick two days before Thanksgiving. I went to the emergency room. Oh, you need to have your gallbladder out. When? Two years yeah. ago. You know? <laughs> it was that bad. Yeah. My night idiot doctor at the hospital goes, let's go home and contact your daughter after the holiday. Your daughter, my doctor, after the holiday. Not making it sound like with anything more than, yeah, you had a gallbladder attack, you need to have your, sur you have your surgery. I go to my doctor, she's like, what are you doing here? I said, the emergency room told me to come see you as soon as possible. She goes, you went to the emergency room? I go, you told me to when I called you on Tuesday. She goes, yeah, but you never listened to me. <laughs> So, which is true, because I hate doctors. So I went and she goes, she looked up the records, she goes, why are you here? I go, I just told you. She goes, why didn't they admit you and do the surgery right then and there? She goes, you could have died this weekend. This is really bad. I go, oh please, it's a gallbladder, okay? So she goes, stay right there. Like, where am I gonna go now? <laughs> I could have died, okay? That's a little bit of a party pooper. <laughs> Fine. So I hear her in her office next to the exam room, and I knew who she was talking to, my surgeon. And she goes, all right, get up. Yes, ma'am. And on. She goes, go to Dr. Zarif right now, and don't stop anywhere. I go, like, I'm going to go through the drive through <laughs> So I go to him, and he says to me, why are you here? Good uh -huh. Lord. I don't know. God put me here. I don't know. In the you world know. of e-records. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You talk to each other, please. And he was, but he was like even more scary. So he goes, okay, did you eat today? I go, well, look at me, do I look like I don't eat? Yeah. And I go, why? He goes, because I would have brought you into surgery, literally, right now we would have gone down 
in together. And I said, yo, that's not gonna happen. He goes, oh yeah? And uh, so he goes, you know you could have died, right? I'm like, yeah, I heard that earlier. <laughs> Too bad I didn't hear it on Tuesday. <laughs> okay, so he goes, come here. You're majoring in bio you know, biology. I go, yes. And he goes, read these numbers. And I'm like, yeah, that's not good. And he goes, we need to do surgery. I said, well, good. I'm really busy until December 16th. <laughs> Can we schedule it for that? He goes, oh, really? You want to wait two weeks? Look, that's good for you. You, got, you have a lot to do, right? Yeah, you have, you have, you have things to do? You want to, you want to, two weeks, or you wait, okay, you got, let me, let me tell you, how, how much do you think you'll get done when you're dead? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you're serious? He goes, deadly. So he goes, I said, well, can you give me until, at least until Tuesday, let me finish out these shows, let me finish my two host appreciation parties, and he's like, I don't know what any of that meant. <laughs> he goes, I can't make you do this, he goes, but you need to sign this waiver that if anything happens to you, I warned you. Yeah. So I finished all this. I go in for a routine gallbladder surgery that Tuesday. I did not get out for eight weeks. Okay? It was not routine. I died during the second surgery. I literally flatlined for four minutes and 32 seconds. Okay? And they actually were so stupid, they went out that and told that to my husband and my son who was sitting in the waiting room. Yep. Okay? But I guess that was too ornery. Not quite yeah, my time. Not, thank, not you, thank you, thank you, thank yeah. you. Jesus, right? And then I did not, I could not get out of the hospital. Ask Doreen. Oh, I, she, would, she came in, I was in, you know, so I'm in surgical. Then I'm in the ICU. Then I'm in I ICU. Then I'm out of ICU, I'm back to surgical. Then I'm out of surgical, I'm back. And I mean, the Louie would leave my room, come back, I'd be gone. <laughs> He's like, she's not mobile. Where is she going? <laughs> <laughs> On December, I did not literally leave the hospital for the last time until August of 2015. Oh my God. Wow. I would go home for a week, I'd be back in for two. Wow. I'd be home for two weeks, I'd be back in for three. I'd be in for, literally, it was horrible. Horrible. Okay, so finally, I had to go in for one final surgery and they solved the problem. So I went in with a, with a gallbladder, I came out with no gallbladder, half a liver, oh half God. of my internal you know, organs, okay? But I, I was still meant to be here to torment you people. Okay? <laughs> so, uh, the, whole, the point I'm trying to make here, though, is from when I got sick to when I actually got out of the hospital, I still sold $84,000. That's a trick, people! Okay? That's more than that. I will tell you the funniest story, though, about what happened in the hospital. Oh, you have to laugh at some moments. You really have to. I'm in the hospital. I get an email. So I'm reading my emails, and it was from the home office. Dear Friel, congratulations on earning the three million in sales. We're very, very proud of you. And I'm thinking to myself, yeah, but I did that last November, geniuses. Okay. At this point, I was at 3.2. All right. And they're like, we would like you to take a photograph for us as soon as possible. <laughs> giving you a budget of like ridiculous of $25 to go get my picture taken. Where? At Walmart? <laughs> I need a lot of makeup for this. 25 it ain't gonna cut it, okay? So they go, we wanna take a picture. If you don't get it to us in a timely manner, we're gonna have to just pick okay. one from the ones we have on file for you. <laughs> I'm reading this and I'm starting to laugh, but I couldn't really laugh because I was intubated, I had tubes, and all this other. So Louis thought I was choking. <laughs> <laughs> the nurse and they come running and they're yelling, code right. I'm like, no, no, it's fine. I go, Louie, please read the eyes. You know? <laughs> so I showed Louie the email. So I, I, I had a pad, so I wrote him, take a picture of me now and send it to him. <laughs> The same thing happened at the one million dollar mark. Yes. Swear to God, right before I hit the one million, I got into a horrible car accident, and they wanted a picture of me, which you guys have seen, yes. okay? And it looks like I'm a geisha girl because <laughs> there was so much makeup on me because I was literally black from the oh, impact. Man. So they got me from here up. I had to paint my whole body for them to get this picture of me. When I hit the two million, I said, I'm not gonna get anywhere near four. 
<laughs> I swear to God, every time I hit a million, something happened. It's like very prophetic. I'm like, yeah, no, that's not good. I'm going to take my time. <laughs> I'll do it when I'm 92. <laughs> okay. All right, so it's really scary. All right, so you, you're going to do five. All right, so let's just learn some things here, shall we? I'm going to start on booking because everybody has a different way of doing it. How many of you walk into a room with the assumption you're going to get a booking? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. How many of you are totally afraid to say in your opening, like, listen guys, I know you're going to want to have a show. Why wouldn't you? What a great way to spend an evening. Friends, family, food, some fun. You're going to you know, have some great free products in your kitchen. Who doesn't love the F word? Come on. <laughs> okay? <laughs> All right, you're going to have, want to have a show. But slow down before I say yes to you having a show with me. Okay. All right. So there's a little process we have to go through. Okay. All right. So you have to go in really with the attitude. I'm going to get a booking. Then you have to deliver on your service to get that booking. Okay. So do you want to know why I never panic when I go to a show? Ever? I've got bookings already lined up. I've always got bookings lined up. So let's say Vanessa is my hostess coming up. I'm co host coaching. I invented host coaching for Pamper Tap. I'm very proud of this, my greatest feat. I'm very proud of host coaching. How many of you would never dream of host coaching? Like, ah, she'll figure it out. You know, yeah, it's not a big deal. I mean, really, I got a booking. You know, she knows what day I'm coming. Mm. We'll see what happens, let's roll the dice, <laughs> okay? When I'm coaching, Vanessa, I'm going to say, Vanessa, I, I forgot to tell you about a special promotion that we run with Pamper Chat. You know, um, in my business, you know, what we do, because it is my business. I own this. I can do whatever I want. I can do whatever I want. Okay? I said, if you get me two people to book a show before the night of your party, even if they are planning on attending the show, and they call me and they say, hi, I'm Jamie. And I'm a friend of, you know, Vanessa's, and um, I would love to have a show, but I'd like to book it off Vanessa. Perfect. I put her into my date book. I put her into your show. And I, so I said to Vanessa, if you give me two people to do that, I'm going to give you $50, $25 for each show that is booking when you attend their show. I'm not paying anything right then and there. So if anything happens and the shows don't go, I lost nothing. Do you know how hard they work to get you either a catalog, a virtual, or a live show? Mm -hmm. Don't let me kid you. I hate catalog and I hate virtual shows. They're always live. Yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. Okay? I'm too stupid for a smartphone. It's <laughs> <laughs> totally true. So I am not going to do anything that's going to more than turn on the computer. Okay? I know how to go three places Yahoo, Pamper Chub, Facebook. <laughs> What more do I need? <laughs> Nothing, right? No, nope, not a damn thing. But how confident would you guys feel if you knew every time you were walking into a show, you had booking lined up, your business is still moving on. And you go in, you do one great job, and you get another one or two. That's a damn good night's nice work. <coughs> and all it took was 34 seconds to tell her about that promotion. And if you ever do that, when you're host coaching, Tell them about having bookings lined up for you? Yeah. Yeah. I don't care if they're attending the show, as long as they call me before the show and choose a date. And why is that another reason I do that? I'm bringing their packet with me. I'm saving $6.50 in shipping. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. And then what's going to happen? So I know Jamie's going to have a show. I know Doreen's going to have a show. They called me and they chose a date. What do you think I'm going to do when they bring me their order? Mm -hmm. Right then and there. <coughs> okay? No, I'm not going to recruit them because I've met both of these. But no, seriously though, okay. this way, okay, you're insured a booking. Okay. At least one. How many would be thrilled for every show you do, you get a booking? You're like, cool. Yeah. So if you're doing eight shows a month and you get eight shows every single month for the rest of your career, you're going to a trip every year and you're probably going to be moving up the rank of the director, you know, lineage over time. 
Okay, now you wanna become a big hitter? Double your show schedule. Recruit more. But they all start with what? Okay. The live show, the human contact. You're making a connection. All right, try it, it truly works. Okay, you're at the show. You want bookings. What's gonna, who remembers the, who had a show before they were consultant? <laughs> well, you had three in one month because you have no life down south. Okay, now. He just loves pampered chef. But what made you, okay, what made you want to have a show? Me? Remember, because sure, you had a show before, because what made you want to book that show? What did the consultant say or do that made you want to have a show? Um, do you want to have a show? My neighbor and it was fun. Why did you do that for permission to talk? <laughs> Please may I speak? <laughs> no, she she asked, and I'd had him before, okay. and my husband was away on work, and <laughs> there we go. exactly, I didn't need any permission, right? Um, and I had a so you liquored up, and you had a bunch of girls, yeah, and over, six and months old, and I was like, yes, let's have some friends over, please. Okay. That was not the answer I wanted. Now, <laughs> but no, seriously though, we all have a reason. What you need to remember is what made you book a show in the first place? Free product. Yeah. Free product. Oh, I like supplies. How many of you booked the show because you love the consultant and you don't really care what you got? Yeah. No, seriously though. I did. I no, loved you. How many of you did that? How many of you really did, did you know? Too. Do you know, could, and I think Michael will vouch for this with me too, as well as anybody who's really successful. Don't you love it when they when they say, you know, they don't like, you just had a $1,200 show with them and they don't care because they just had such a good time and you tell them, oh, you've got 260, you know, yeah. I know, was this good for you? What, do you want me to light a cigarette? It was fine. Was this good for you? Do I have to be more, what, more cuddle time? What do you want from me? Oh yeah, but it's awkward. I don't understand. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, she's scary. Scary. <laughs> but no, seriously, because they had such a good time, they didn't really care about what they were earning. That's when you know you've done your job well. Okay? And then the friends come up and they're like, oh, I got, I got to have a show. My family, how many of you have had this where they say, my family will love you? And then they warn you about their family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you ever have yeah, that with my I think you're the only consultant that could handle my family. Yeah. <laughs> now, have you so ever cool. had, I'm going to ask, I'm, I'm going to hop around here a little bit, but how many of you had a show when you sort of lost control? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Have you ever have a show where you're trying to get them back? Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you the, the best little oh, tricks oh, that work, but I've been showing it across the country when I go to train. Come out from behind your table and just walk around like this. <laughs> now they're talking, they're, they're being obnoxious. And all of a sudden you're, you're doing this. And somebody inevitably is going to say to you, what are you looking for? The control I lost five minutes ago? <laughs> Okay, just walk around. What'd you do? The control I lost five minutes ago. Are you back now? Okay. But that's really the fun way, and they're laughing. Your reaction is exactly their reaction, and you get them back. But what have you done now? They're having a ball. And you didn't have to. How many of you do that stupid trick? Four years ago when we started, where's Sue and Norm? Right? They, you know, they go, just beat your chopper, beat your chopper. It just sounds profane. Don't do that. <laughs> Why would you want to be that room? How would you like your consultant? You're the host, right? You're hosting the show. Here's your consultant. She can't control the room because her friends are drunk, okay? But she takes her food chopper and she's doing this. Now, that's insulting to you and your friend. You should never be the one to gain control in your own show. That's your hostess's job, not yours. So if you're coaching her before the show, you make this clear to her. You make it absolutely clear. So let's say Brian is my host. You're all prepped. You're ready to go. Your table is set. I don't ever want you to do anything regarding your show prep, the food prep, until your display is perfect, the way you want it, whatever way you do it. Because if you're running late prepping, it doesn't matter. They come in, they've got that store window set up. They're going to be shopping your table. 
and they're not going to notice that you're, you're doing a little bit of prepping. If you're prepping, your table's not set, they walk in, they're going to go, what the hell's going on around here? Mm -hmm. And you never get them back. Make sure your display is always on point before you start doing your food prep. Okay? Or have your hostess start on the food prep if there's stuff she can do for you while you're doing your display. Okay? I'm going to say to Brian, okay, Brian, we're all set to go. So whenever you're ready, if you could get their attention, introduce me. Okay? Never, ever introduce yourself until the hostess has introduced you. By her introducing you, she has now risen you onto a pedestal. Tell her what to say. Tell him what to say. Brian, I'd like you to introduce me. This is Friel Yan, our kitchen consultant for the evening, or our pamper chef consultant for the evening. Okay? By doing that, okay, you're not just the dumb man or lady. How many of you get called, oh, you're the dumb lady? No, I'm not. Um, no, I'm not. I'm not. Okay? No, I'm not. All right? Then I say, now listen, Brian. You warned me that you have a very rowdy group. I'm going to ask you a huge favor, but I would never want to insult you or your guests, okay? So if the group gets a little out of hand, if I give you a little signal, like maybe, you know, <laughs> <laughs> can you bring them back to me? Can you bring them back to me? And I said, uh, you know, because he can yell and say, shut up, you know, listen to the woman. I can't do that. No. That's not professional, no. okay? So coach them to be your, you know, police patrol, okay? It really makes a huge difference, all right? Now, another joke you want to use that really works, now, and I, I don't call it a joke, but it really does work all the time. Now, you do, you've done your show, and you're talking about bookings one more time. Now, I'm going to show more. All right, guys, had a great time. I'm going to do a little bit of the recap of the show, but before we do that, I want to give you fair warning. I know some of you are going to want to book a show, and who could blame you, <laughs> okay? But fair warning, if you book a show with me, you do get me. <laughs> That's right, think carefully. <laughs> now, <coughs> this is what you're supposed to say, but for real, we want you. But if I scare you, I will send you somebody normal and that will be your punishment. <laughs> they do crack up. It really is very funny. Because you book me, you get me, okay? And be proud, like, yep, you get me. And then you want to make, right, this is, very, this is really serious. There's a, very, a lot of psychology to what I do. But I do want to tell you why I say that. Because a customer came up to me, and they said, I'd like to have a show. I said, great. And they said, but you'll be the one showing up at my door, right? Honest to God, true story. I go, well, yeah. You said me, right? She goes, yeah. I go, is there a reason you're asking me that? She goes, well, I booked a show with another company. I won't tell you what the company is, but you need a match to light it. And what happened was, the woman booked a show. She thought she was getting the woman that she met. The, and she talked to the woman all up until the show. The door knocks. She answered. The door knocks. And we do that in Connecticut. You know, we have things that are, are automatic. <laughs> stranger standing at her door. Wow. And she said, this woman goes to her, hi, I'm here to do your candle party. She goes, I don't know you. And she goes, oh, I know, but my director told me to come because she had another show. She told me to come to you. No. So turns out what this consultant does, she double books. She decides which show she thought would be the better wow. producing show for her. Honest to God, true story. I would not lie to you. I'm in a church. And she took what she thought would be the better show and sent one of her newer consultants to do this other total story. You know, the woman goes, I was very nice. She goes, I was very polite. I was very angry. This woman seemed perfectly lovely, but I don't want a total stranger in my house with my children that I have not met before and talked to a little bit. Who could blame her? So that's why she was saying, if I book you, I get you. I get no, you get Geraldo. Of course you get me. <laughs> OK? So if you're really confident about what you've done, they're going to want you, OK? Now, how many of you have had a run of shows and you got no bookings? And we've all had. If anybody, if anybody, if anybody 
tells you any different, they are lying. Michael has showed where there are no boogies. I have showed where there are no boogies. When we're done crying and drinking, we get busy, okay? And the fact is that you have to get busy because now you're like, okay, this is not comfortable for me, okay? This is not comfortable for me. I, do, I, I panic, okay? But I love panic. I do well under pressure, okay? That's when you have to step out of the box. Again, you have to step out of that box. You have to get out of your comfort zone and you have to work smart. You have to work smart. Let me give you an analogy about working smart, okay? How many of you consider yourself a hobbyist? Pamper chat. Okay, good. You know, like you're happy doing one or two shows a month, right? Okay. I want you to always remember this. I want you to engrave it somewhere, write it somewhere, tattoo it somewhere, okay? This, how many of you have a hobby? Yeah, hobby. Yeah. How many of you scrap? You know? How many of you knit? You have a hobby? Oh, I into their beautiful head. Yeah. Business makes you money. money. Hobbies cost, cost you money. money. Okay? If you keep that mantra in your head at all times when you're running your business, even if you're a hobbyist, which is awesome, I would love to have 40 hobbyists on my team, okay? Why not make those two shows you're doing a month a business? Wouldn't it be great if you knew those two shows you're doing every month were gonna be thousand dollar shows? Treat every show like you're running a business, like you actually have a brick and mortar store, okay? How are you getting customers in that store? If you're only open two days a month for business, how are you gonna draw in the most customer base into that store for those two days? Yell it out to me, what are you gonna do? Coach the heck out of next two shows. Stay in contact. Ask them what she wants. What is her wish list? What is she working for? Why is she having the show? What can I do to help you? You need ideas of people to invite. Would you like me to do the invitations for you? Not gonna happen, I don't do that. Now, okay, but, <laughs> preach, but I will tell you who to invite. Okay, how to invite, all right? Okay, run a promotion for yourself. Give me 15 people, 15 paying bodies in that seat, in those seats, I'm gonna offer you a second recipe or I'm gonna give you a special gift. Have a thousand dollars show for me within this two week slot, if I'm trying to fill in close because something happened, okay, I'm gonna give you $25 in cash toward your order. Am I really spending $25? No. no. I'm buying it with her 25 or 30% discount. Is it worth it for me to have a thousand dollar show and, and put $12 and 42 cents toward it? Yes. Hell yeah. Yes. Yes. Am I telling you to go spend your money? No. no. The company gives Choice. us great hostess and customer promotions. They give us amazing. We're the only company where they really give us a lot of wonderful stuff. But sometimes you gotta spend a little money to make a lot of money. That's right. Okay? Yeah. Don't ever, like a lot of you, I was really amazed me today when Michael was speaking and how they buy the double burner grill pan or whatever. He only gives them free shipping. I give them a microwave. I don't know that I don't think that's <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking 6,000 shows, not so much. <laughs> but seriously though, if he's selling a $250 piece of cookware that he is going to make $80 commission on, yeah. I think 525 he's good with. Yeah. Okay. So do it, do it. Okay, run, your, you own this business, Giant run. Four shows. Yeah, run your business the way you wanna run it. You own it, mm -hmm. so own it, okay? Now, <clears throat> all right, you've got bookings lined up. You've got somebody who wants to have a show. You start coaching on the minute they say what to you. Yes. 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 No, you start coaching them the minute you say hello to that show. 
who's totally lost with that phrase. Okay, we're at Brian's party. Brian booked off Cherise. Okay? Now, he heard my, the same spiel I'm going to give his people at Cherise's show. So he knew the minute he sat down what to expect by hosting a show, going into show mode. All right, everybody, thank you so much for coming. I'm going to reintroduce myself just because all of you are still saying, what the hell was that name? <laughs> <laughs> my actual given name is Friel Yan. I also go by Finale, Fertilizer, Fingernails, <laughs> and Fajita. <laughs> though is free for all because that's what I do here. Okay, it's very apropos. Okay. But after my name is Brielle Yan, I am from Lebanon, my husband's from China. We have you know we have Lebanese, Chinese, and a Picadese. <laughs> for having a show with me because I am so grateful that he booked a show and that you're all here because that means I'm here and my family isn't. <laughs> I love my children, I do, I do. But not every minute of every day. <laughs> I love them. I just don't like it very much right now. <laughs> I'm only kidding. They're wonderful children. Uh, now, but I do want to thank Ryan for having me. But I want to tell you how we all got here. I'm not telling you about the birds and the bees. <laughs> I'm going to leave that up to you. <laughs> tell you how we got here. I met Brian at Charissa's though, and so I always love when I have a past host in the room because she becomes my ally. So she's going to jump in and tell you what she earned at her party, what products she loves. Okay, so Brian had a great time. He decided to book a show. And I do have to tell you, he told me you guys were terrible and that I would be the only one that could control you. Just say it. <laughs> so let's see if he's right. Okay, and so Brian's job was very simply, okay, he, his job was to give me a date that worked for both of us, okay? And I have to tell you guys, I'm not easy to get. I'm cheap, but I'm not easy, okay? <laughs> I am not easy to get, all right? So if you think it, even remotely that you want to have a show with me, you got to start looking at your date book and see how we can coincide, because I do book far out. So if you think you're having a show with me next week, okay, you can. We could probably make it work but it's gonna to have to be when I'm available, but I would love to do that, and I'll even make it worth your while if you wanna book a show real close in. But generally, I'm gonna book about two months, three months out. Like right now, I'm booking for February, so just, you know, just keep that in mind, okay? But I'll be glad to put you on a list for a show, okay? But don't think if you call me a month from now, you're gonna get me for the beginning of December. I don't think that's really gonna work out for you. So make sure you book me as fast as you, you decide, yes, I'm willing to let her into my home. Okay, and then we'll book a date. So Brian chose his date. He got in early. He got the night that he wanted. We were available. His job was to invite all of you. Now, how many of you got a card invitation? Oh, great. So he did listen. Okay, good. And then how many of you got, saw his post on Facebook and all the things that I, you know, um, posted for you? And how many of you hit going on Facebook? Great. Okay, I have your name. I can look it up because I have a little gift for you for doing that because I know it made him feel easy knowing that nine of you were definitely coming and then he had gotten a lot of other verbal, you know, um, confirmation. Okay, and how many of you have got an email from him or you work with him and he just told you about it or handed you an invitation? Okay, whichever way you got here, I want to thank you and I'm going to make it worth your while. Okay, so his job was solely to invite all of you in any way that he's comfortable with fill the room, and then choose a recipe or two he'd like me to demonstrate, provide me the ingredients, give me a good sized table or a kitchen island to work on, and preferably a working oven, but if we need to, I have a microwave in the car. Because <laughs> <laughs> obviously it seems I drive around the neighborhood with that. Okay. No, but seriously though, as long as you got a microwave or an oven, we're good to go, okay? Um, I do prefer running water, just ask him. <laughs> Just ask him. Okay, they always joke about that and tell him what happened when there was no running water. Okay, so and Brian got me the ingredients. Here's what we're making. Okay, so what have I done here? I've told them everything they have to do to host the show. That's it. That's when I start host just hosting my next show. Not when I've given them the packet and I call them the next day to thank them. Okay? All right. You begin then. You've got bookings already waiting for you. I swear to God, it works, guys. Yep. Ask for them in advance when you're host coaching. Okay? All right? You're doing the show. You've got the bookings. You set a date. Now let's talk about the show itself. How many of you are absolutely terrified to mention any product 
that cost more than 20 bucks? No. How many of you are really, I have the price fear? Okay, how many of you think $200 for a pan is way too much money? No. No, no, okay, Kim, I get it. Okay, but no, seriously, how many of you would never pay $200 for one pan yourself? Be honest, be totally honest. Do you know, but do you know subconsciously that is holding you back? I'm going to give you two stories and two ways to handle any price objection you have in your own head. You're putting your presumption on your audience. You don't know who's out there desperate to save money by eating in instead of eating out, eating healthier. You don't know that, okay? Let me, okay, I'm going to sell you the family skillet. Shall I? Yeah. Okay. Let's sell you a family skillet. All right, guys. I'm going to talk to you about one of our number one selling pieces of cookware. Now, as you all know, we've got three lines of cookware that we offer. Okay, I know, I know how many of you are going, three lines? Yes, yes, those yes. of you, we have three lines of cookware. We have our beautiful executive cookware. We've got our awesome stainless steel <coughs> cookware, which I'm going to be totally honest with you. Only a small minority of you really need the stainless cookware. You don't need a 10-piece set of that, but you need two major pieces of stainless cookware, and I'll tell you what those are. And then we have our new Rock Crop collection. Please remember the name Rock Crop. From here on in, I'm going to call it RC. <laughs> Because one of these days, I'm going to lose that second R, and I'm going to get mail. <laughs> or fire. Okay? So RC from here on in. We're together? Yes. Don't get me fired. I love my job. Okay. <laughs> Plus, I know there's children in the room. Okay. Now, it's a stupid ass name for any line of cooking. I'm telling you straight up. Okay? I just sell the products. I don't name them. Okay. But Pamper Chef, we do have a way of naming things. Think about what the product does. That's what we call it. Where's the thing that chops the food? Oh, the food chopper. Where's the thing that opens the bottle of wine? Oh, the wine bottle opener. That's how I name my children. You who talks back, you who eats too much, and you who sleeps all day. Come here. <laughs> now, in my case, they're the same child. Okay? All right. And his name is Adam George. All right? No, I'm only kidding. He's a wonderful child. I always say to my children, go with God, just go. Now, okay, so I am going to show you, though, the one piece that if you buy from me and never buy another thing from Pamper Chef again, you are going to write me a Christmas card and a thank you note on my birthday every single day for the rest of your life. And that is our family skillet, our 12-inch family skillet. And do you know why you want to invest the $159 you know, dollars? Now, I know Mike, I'm gonna step out of the show more for a minute. Michael says don't use the word dollars. This is the only time, but what did I use before the word dollars? Yes. Investment. When you put the word investment in front of an amount, that's all they're hearing. They're not hearing the number. Okay, you are not hearing the number. Okay, so, but I do agree with him 100%. Don't say dollars without putting the word investment before, all right? Now, how am I going to convince you that the price of this skillet, notice what I did there? The yeah. price of this skillet is going to become more valuable for you in the next two minutes when me talking to you about it. Okay? So look at this beautiful 12-inch skillet. Why would you want to you know, invest in something like this? Okay? Well, what are some of the features? Now, how many of you have a frying pan at home? You hold it by the handle and the bottom swings on its own like a pendulum. <laughs> okay? You're like, how is it doing that? That's pretty cool. Oh, squirrel. No. Okay. Or how many of you put your pan on the stove and it spins? That's a little bonus. You didn't know you got that in the package, did you? Okay. You pour oil into it and it stays in the pool or it goes to the corner of the pan. Pans have no corners. You should not be doing that. Okay. Or you're like one of my lovely customers. Goes, oh, I just thought my house was crooked. Yeah, that's it. The lemon that tilted it out. You must live in the valley. <laughs> or how many of you have the pans that are so ugly you're embarrassed to ever put them on a pot rack and you own pot racks? Okay, they're all greasy on the outside. They're all tacky and gummy. Let me show you some of these features of ours. First of all, our pans are riveted together. They're not screwed together. And you're asking me why is that important? Remember that when you go on a plane next time, do you want it riveted together or screwed together? <laughs> Notice the flared lip? Okay, two reasons why the outside looks as beautiful as the inside of this pan. Same material, hard anodized steel. But with the flared lip, nothing drips down the side and rolls onto the bottom of the pan. So it's always going to look beautiful. Okay? 
No. Is that? Yeah. Okay, it's not a stick. Cool. How many of you have ever heard of Teflon? Yeah. It's a pretty awesome. ugly material. It's not healthy for you at all. Okay, we don't do Teflon at Paper Chef. We're very proud of that fact. We have anodized steel. What does that mean to you? That you are married with children, most of you, and children and husbands can be idiots. Yes. <laughs> and you tell them bamboo, silicone, nylon, nothing else, and they bring out a knife. Yeah. <laughs> to flip an egg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I supposedly have two children that are geniuses and supposedly married to one. Not so much. Not convinced. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Put it out there. Who's with me? I know you are. Okay? Just be done. Okay. But the thing of it is, though, even if you scratch our pan, you got a lifetime guarantee. If you call them and tell them the truth, that your husband used a knife to flip an egg, not we're good. not going to replace it for you. But if normal wear and tear happens, you're covered for a lifetime. But if you do get that cut mark, it never flakes or peels when it looks like you added pepper when you really didn't. See, that's okay. See, I have in-laws that eat food that hangs from a store window. Okay. And still has his head. I don't mind giving him a little Teflon. You I care about. <laughs> don't do it. Just don't do it. Don't do it. All right. So even if you got that little line, it's not going to flake and peel, and it's not going to really deter you from using it for a long time. Just avoid that. That's why we give you all of these wonderful bamboo silicone spatulas, our nylon spatulas. They're there for that reason, to protect the cookware. The cookware has a lifetime guarantee, okay? Don't that convince you need something like this? How about the fact that it goes into your oven after 400 degrees? Mm -hmm. Now is when you're going to start thinking. You've got this pan. Anybody a cake maker, a cake decorator? Yeah? You ever try to buy a 12-inch cake pan from Wilton of any good quality? Yes. They start at 89. There's Tim again. They start at 89 dollars for the high end. Okay, for the high end, the real heavy, durable steel, like our beautiful sheet pans. Okay, the triple rolled, 89 dollars. They start for a 12-inch cake pan. Keep that price in mind. How many of you like to make pancakes with French toast? Our griddle starts at 119. A cheap griddle will start at 29 dollars. That's about a one-year warranty, okay? Not lifetime. So I want you to add 89 to 29, okay? How many of you like to make a, a nice roast? Like a, maybe a seven, eight pound Purdue stuffer with all the vegetables around it? My kids call my, always called my pan, my 12-inch family skillet, the Thanksgiving pan because they always thought Thanksgiving came out of that pan. And I would get my chicken, I would sear it beautifully all the way around, get that nice crispy skin on it, seal in all the juices, throw in my potatoes and my veggies, throw it in the oven at 350 and let it go for an hour and 22 minutes. Exactly. The word you're looking for is OCD. Yeah. <laughs> I, how about this though? Take out the pan, take out your chicken, take out your veggies, put it into one of our wonderful platters that you've got nice and warm, put the pan on the stove and make a pan gravy. So now, when's the last time you bought a roasting pan? You wouldn't get any one of any decent for at least 50 bucks. Please add that to the price. How many of you like to stir fry? I have to, it was written in my marriage vows. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have to obey, but I had to promise to make Kung Pao chicken. <laughs> Just saying. We all have our crosses to bear, okay? Ever buy a stir fry or a true wok? $42 for a cheap, cheap one, okay? Ours goes for $139. Think about this. If you went and took this pan and replaced eight to 10 different pans that you have in your cabinets right now, so if you want to downsize, how many of you are thinking, ah, my kids are grown, what do I need with something that big? I'm, I just eliminated eight pots and pans out of your cabinet for you, because this pan will do it all. Still not convinced, huh? All right, ladies, work with me on this one. <coughs> How many of you have had this happen to you? You have to go to a special event. You, you need a special dress. Oh my God, what to do, what to do. <laughs> so you go, I'm leaking here, people, I'm leaking. <laughs> Yeah. Somebody give me a bath towel. <laughs> Take off one of those damn cakes. No. 
so you go, you're going and you want to find this dress, okay? You go and you want to find this dress. You find it. Oh my Lord, you looking at this dress, you put it on and what happens? You are five inches taller, 50 pounds lighter. You're tan now, who knew? <laughs> oh my God, you're blonde. <laughs> your eyes have turned blue. You're stunning, you're not an A cup anymore. <laughs> and you're looking at it and you're like, oh my God, this is the perfect dress. Then you look at the price tag. Youch. So what do you automatically do as a woman? What do you do? You Men do this all the time. Pretend. You start to justify the pants. All right, now, I'm going to wear this dress to the wedding, of course, I'm going to look around the thing and my old boyfriend's going to be so jealous. Oh my God. Then I'm going to wear it to the graduation party. Then, oh, you know, I have the communion coming up. Oh, Christmas, oh my God, oh my God. Now the fact that it's up to here and sleeve doesn't matter to you at that point. <laughs> you're, now every time you're thinking, I'm gonna wear it on the cruise for the captain's dinner. Now every time that you make a reason to wear that dress, what is happening to that dress? It's getting <laughs> cheaper and cheaper in your head. You no, know, damn well, you're only gonna wear that once, but people are gonna remember it once, wear the same dress twice. Okay? <laughs> but you justified it in your head. This is what I want you to, if you add up what it would cost you to buy all those other pans that I mentioned to you, you're getting this pan for free and you owe me money, <laughs> okay? You need this pan, but do I want you to invest in this pan? No, I want you to invest in having a show and getting the pan for free. That's where I want you to make the investment. So why not get that pan for free and everything else that you have on your list? Right there, I got them. Mm -hmm. They're either gonna buy the pan or they're having a show. Yep. <coughs> now, if you're really desperate, you, I, I convinced you how badly you need this pan, I want you, know, you wanna buy the pan tonight, by all means, please do, but I still want you to have a show and get everything else that you're putting aside for now free at your show, mm -hmm. okay? And that happens, honest to God, more often than not. They still want the pan, they wanna start using it right away, but they're still gonna have a show to get everything else, okay? Now, how many of you feel better about talking a higher price item when you think about it in that respect? Oh, yeah. Right? Okay? It's more comfortable. You're not like, you know, because people are not blind nor stupid. They can read. <coughs> they know when there's a one and two more numbers after it, that ain't on sale. Okay? So just be okay with it because you're giving them a, qua a product worth that amount of money. That's right. But if they can get it for free, I mean, you know, you can be stupid or you can be dumb, but either way, you're gonna be lonely, <laughs> okay? You need to tell them it's okay to have a show, you'd be crazy not to, and it's okay to spend something on the quality. You know, and who was doing, was it Becky? No, it was, yeah, something about like their husband and their tools. We always use that analogy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My husband sings his wild bill, okay? This male, you know, he, like, he needs to hammer something in, literally hammer, and it comes three weeks to Google. Yeah. I have to buy the right hammer. <laughs> I want you to hang a picture that says, eat here. <laughs> Ain't no degree needed for that. <laughs> okay, but he's an engineer. <coughs> the man can build you rocket ships, but he can't find his way to the fridge. <laughs> okay. Or the cleaning brush for the toilet, just say it. <laughs> okay. You have to justify it for them. They have to realize that it's a value. It's an absolute value. But apply it to the rock rock, apply it to the cookware, apply it to the stainless. Now I'll tell you, as a professional chef, and use this at your, you know, use it at your shows. I have a friend who's a professionally trained chef, and every chef says to you, you need to have a combination of cookware in your kitchen. This is the honest to God truth. No chef would ever be caught dead without a stainless steel skillet. We need that because we like to deglaze the pan, we want that fond, F-O-N-D, that's the brown crispy bits that you deglaze with wine and butter, or lemon juice, depending on what you're making, and you don't get fond because with a nonstick pan, you don't get it, because you're not burning or sticking anything, okay? But you need a nonstick pan, because believe it or not, a nonstick pan is a better roasting pan than a stainless steel pan for brown and color, okay? So I'm not gonna do an omelet in a stainless steel frying pan, you could, but you're using a lot of butter, or a lot of oil. You don't have to do that in a nonstick pan, okay? So you need to have a combination. So if you're telling me 
you know, and I ask, I always ask my audience, you know, what kind of cook are you? Okay, it's another little thing I do at my show that when I do a little what I call intermission, I'll go around the room and say, you know, hey, you know, you know, what did you make for dinner tonight? You know, they'll tell me, right? You know, who who ordered honestly, who ordered or went through the drive through twice this week? The hand I said, be brutally honest. I'm not judging you, God knows I've done it. Okay? Okay? You know, the find out what you're doing. They say, Oh my god, I got the perfect tool for you. Oh my god, I got the perfect and you do. You have that perfect tool. You have the perfect show. If you went to the drive through more than twice this week because you're so busy running around the kids, you need to do a, a show and meal 30 minutes or less. I'm going to make you happier, healthier, and wealthier by simply hosting a show. Definitely healthier by eating at home fresh food instead of going to a drive through okay? You're going to be wealthier because you're saving a fortune by eating at home instead of going through a drive through You're going to be happier because your kids are healthy and you have money in your pocket. And it's logical, okay? It's very logical. And I say anything that sounds absolutely stupid, but that's just the way that I talk. <laughs> okay? So do I want you to invest in the item? No. I want you to invest in the show and have the item for free. Okay? That's a great way to talk about the higher priced items and not be afraid. Because if you're afraid of them, then you don't believe in them. That's all there is to it. That's right. If you're afraid of the price of the product, you don't believe in the product, so don't bother. They're gonna find those citrus peelers without any help from you. <laughs> How many of you have ever had a show that was so great where somebody comes in and they've said to you, well, I came in with a list and you blew that right out the door. Okay? Do you wanna know what my customer average is? Who can guess? 950. <laughs> 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 I, I actually checked. I wanted to make sure before I came here. $232. Okay? Oh, she's actually pretty close. My average show customer order for the past month, for the month of September. Now, I only did seven shows in September, okay? And I sold $13,400, okay? Do the math, figure out the show average. $2,000 a show. Mm -hmm. So what is my customer order if I've got 12 people sitting in a room? $192 is my, my average customer order. Okay? Do you think that happened just because I'm good looking? True. <laughs> Absolutely true. Because I have a sexy voice? Absolutely. The fact that the front row is all wet, don't ignore that. <laughs> the fact that I have to do my show with a splatter gun? Ignore that too. No, but seriously, I know how to sell. I know my products inside and out. Remember when Michael mentioned the pig? Yeah. Talk to Sue about the pig. Talk to Randy, to Suzanne, to Kim. Talk about the pig. The pig is evil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the pig gave me nightmare, okay, because I'm an overachiever. So I memorized the pig. <coughs> Ask me about any product ever invented from 1992 when I became a consultant to now, and I will tell you. I will tell you where it's made, how it's made, who made it, and the name of the person that put it in a box and sent it to you. Okay? <laughs> this is because the word you're looking for has no life. Okay? I became obsessed. And we had to memorize the pig. We don't have the, the beautiful sheets and the printouts and all the stuff they have for us now. Sure, they bring all this stuff down when we're all old and tired and don't care enough to look. Okay? No, the, you have to know your products though. Do you have to know every single one? No. No. What are you going to tell somebody about the citrus peeler? <laughs> now, what products need the most explanation when you're doing the show? What are your power tools? I don't understand a single word of that. Okay, but no, seriously, your power tools are anything that you believe will change the, the person's life in their kitchen. That's a power tool. What tool do we sell will change that customer's life in their kitchen? What? What? What's my tool? Oh, you were talking to Michael, I'm ignoring you. The rock crop. Okay, the rock too crop. late, honey, we've moved on. Keep up or we're cutting you loose. It's changed yeah. my life. It has. Okay, but no, seriously though, the power tools, we know they're on oh, the grill, double, double burning grill pan, you hear about that, the family skillet, the manual food processor, you know, the rock crops, the, all of it. Okay, no, 
whatever the power tool is, is what tool you think will truly change the way a family is cooking and eating. That's your power tool. Doesn't have to be $250, it really doesn't. A power tool could be $80. I don't show anything less than $80, except Manuel. 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 Love Manuel. Manuel. He's mine. I have five of him. <laughs> the, 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 the thing of it is though, what is, what is our philosophy, what is our mission with Camper Chef? Truly? Bring families. To bring yeah. families together. To change lives. To, change lives. to bring us together. To have more time with each other. This applies to your personal business. This applies to your cooking and eating a meal with your family. Okay? So you have to get to, you're not going to get rich overnight. And anybody tells you different is lying to you. That's right. Okay, I worked hard to make the paychecks that I made. I've been through hell and back, and I'm still here almost 25 years later. Okay, I mean, I told you, car accidents, deaths, losing a child, losing my father, you know, dying. That was a little inconvenient. <laughs> that was the one that had me skip a beat, okay? I have never in my 24 years, in all the things that I have gone through, have I ever, ever had a grace month or not met my director qualifications. Ever. Ever. We're talking 24 years. Okay? No. Because there's no reason to. There's no reason to not meet your quota. I do have to love Michael. He goes, 200, woo, I'm active. Woo, went green. You know, I mean, like, you know, I, I cry if I sell 8,000 a month. That's it, I sulk. That's right. That's right. You said in the hospital that one month that I beat you. It was not the hospital. I cranked it. That's right. She was dead. I was dead. She 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 Okay. <laughs> How many, I want to do a real quick thing because we've got to be out of here in five minutes, really quick, okay? Who has got a product they could absolutely not sell for the life of them? Raise your hand and I'll pick one person. What is one product, forget it, you hear people talking about it at the meeting, oh, your director has sold 12 of them this month. You don't even know where to begin with it. You cannot sell it or have anybody even remotely interested or even book for it. Anybody have a product? Which one? The popcorn maker. The popcorn maker. Well, I agree with you. I, I don't get it. Okay. So inconsistent. Yeah. It, well, yeah, you're absolutely right. To me, right now, they haven't worked out the case because they're not based on your average microwave. You don't know what's going to happen from one microwave to the other. I mean, I was definitely at a show and Louie was with me because uh, Louie's been helping me when he could because I have to go in for a spinal fusion, so I can't do any lifting. So I have to get my, my neck fused. So he was helping me. He was giving me this sign like, hey, I did something better at my show. I did something better at my show. I did something better at my show. He is not That's an, even he's better. Not a, he's the man is a saint. I mean, he figures the longer he's married to me, the more assured his place in heaven is. <laughs> and at this point, he's going to be the right hand of God. So <laughs> that, okay? I, I'm going to miss him when I'm down south. <laughs> square foot home. This house is stunning. Okay, Louis is still talking about the mirror that's as big as our living room. Okay, and we don't have a tiny living room. I mean, it's, it's not as big as Lisa's, but it's, you know, it's decent. Okay, and this mirror, they needed 22 men, I swear to you, the woman told me to get this mirror into that. They had to tear the wall down, bring the mirror in, and rebuild the wall. It's 10,000 square foot. Oh, I'm sorry, give me a hammer, that mirror would have been gone. Yeah. yeah. Okay, but so he, he's like thinking, so he's doing the popcorn. I, I look up, and I guess I wasn't, he's been doing it for a while, because he's cooking up a sweat. <laughs> and he's giving me, like, he's waving in the, you know, the USS Independence or something. <laughs> and, he, you know, and I'm looking at him, I've never seen him panic, ever. I mean, I died, he didn't panic. <laughs> and I go, I go, what's the matter with you? And he goes, um, he goes, up, he goes, it's on fire. <laughs> the pop 
Okay, so you, it, your yeah. knives have to be important. If you really invest in less poor quality cookware, if you invest in poor quality, you know, that you're gonna get, you can get away with it. If you invest in poor quality knives, you're gonna do damage to yourself, and you're gonna be buying these knives over and over and over again, okay? A good quality knife has to be made from chromium steel. That's why if you look on the Global, the Wusthof, the Henkels, okay, those knives, you're gonna see the letter C M B, which translate into chromium uh, steel. Okay? And so what you're gonna do here is it's, you know, see the C M B steel, it only comes from one place in Germany. That's where the steel comes from. No knives are forged in Germany. All knives are made in China. How many of you get to think, well, it's made in China, I can't have it? Everything is made in China because they're the only ones that still have foundries left to make forged steel knives. Okay, yes, in China and Japan. There are some smaller companies, but they can't do it on the scale that we need them to or other companies need to produce the volume. So the steel, though, comes from Germany. Okay, and this is the number one chromium steel. You need that for a sharp blade, okay? The importance of the blade is if you look, take your knife and you trip it up and you're looking straight down the, the blade part of the knife, you're gonna straight angle, you should be, you'll notice it's slightly beveled. That's for the food to fall away from your knife. You need that heaviness and the durability. You need a full tang. What that means is the knife goes all the way through to the handle, okay? And it has to be perfectly balanced. If you have a knife that's very weak, if you ever held a color-coded knife, the chef's in your knife, and our Santoku or chef's knife in the other hand, you can feel the difference. If you try to balance your color-coded, it's heavily weighted in the hand. That's how flimsy the steel is. If you take our forged cutlery and you balance it in your hand, the weight is evenly distributed between the knife because the handles still have a huge piece of steel going right through it, okay? now. Why do you need to invest in a block of knives? Because you're gonna hurt yourself if you're not using the right knife for the job, okay? Like you can't be an electrician and you use one, screw, one kind of screwdriver. 
you're not gonna get the job done right, okay? You cannot carve a turkey with a paring knife unless your, your name is Alexander David Yan and you're a moron, okay? <laughs> because my, my wonderful child here, who got the beautiful block of knives, he loves to cook, but he does not like to do dishes, so he will use whatever knife is left standing and clean before he decides to do dishes again. So he will carve a turkey with a three inch paring knife, okay? You need the right tool for the job, okay? You are not gonna use a chef's knife to bone a fish or trim a tenderloin loin, okay? You need the flexibility of the boning knife. You are not gonna take a five inch utility knife and go and try and cut a rutabaga, okay? You could probably get it done, but I guarantee you, you're eventually gonna break that knife and it's gonna take you forever. You need the santoku. Why the santoku? For, for butternut, acorn, rutabaga, turnips, who knows? It doesn't stick. It does not stick. You have the little gratons, the little divots. I call them divots because I'm a golfer. And that, well, actually what I do is more like swimming or being on the beach, come on, in the sand. Okay. Or the water, bring me a drink and play fruit. Okay? Uh, but seriously, so the little divots, they allow the air to pass between the knife and the food. So when you're cutting, how many of you tried to cut a sweet potato, your knife is stuck halfway? Yeah. yeah. Not with a santoku, because the air comes up and it releases the food, okay? Now, when you're buying a block of knives, do you know that it's always 20% cheaper to buy a set of anything than to buy individual pieces? Mm -hmm. Always. Always. That's why it's cheaper for you if you add up all those knives and you add up the $180 that it costs just for that beautiful bamboo block, how much money are you saving from that price? Especially if you're having a show and getting it for half price. You need to, you know. And then I always say, look, <coughs> I don't expect you to buy an entire block of knives. You don't have to. There's three knives every chef needs to have in their kitchen. A seven inch santoku, a chef's knife, and a boning knife, believe it or not, okay? All right, if you're scared of the boning knife, a five inch utility. You're off to a great stop. So get the small knife block. You're gonna fall so in love with these knives, you're coming out for the extra ones, and you know what? You're gonna need the bigger block. Get the block of knives, and I guarantee you, within two years, you have not only gotten all the value out of these knives, they're lifetime guarantee, you're gonna be buying them for the next wedding you're going to, you're gonna have a show to buy them when your kid gets married, you're gonna put them in your vacation home, because you're investing in safety, quality, and a lifetime guarantee. You cannot lose with these knives. You put them on par with Wusthof, Henkel, Global, they can't be touched. They're absolutely amazing. To protect them, you never ever wash a knife of that quality with anything but lukewarm water, not hot scalding water ever for chromium steel because you will pit them. You put them into the dishwasher, you've now avoided the warranty just like with our executive cookware. Okay, you literally run lukewarm water. You never, ever soak a knife. Never. Like you would a burnt pan with cheese in it. Okay, you never soak a knife. You wash it quickly. You wash it with a non-abrasive side of a sponge. You dry it immediately. And you put it back in its guard or into the block. And we are the only company that gives you a shield, a sheath, for every single knife we sell. Whether it's our $80 chef knife or our $19 color-coded knife, we're giving you a protective sleeve. Every other company charges you extra. So where are you gonna save the most money? By literally buying the block of knives. That's your biggest investment. It's like buying a 10-piece set of cookware for half the price. What about but, the people who are always trying to explain to you that they put their knives in upside down the block? And I'm like, no, the block is designed what? for your knives to go in. What? You can't even write. Oh. And people turn them upside down. Oh, Why the blade up? Them? And I'm like, no, they go in straight. They're yes, that, that is a very big misconception. That, that is, a lot of chefs have this debate where you put your knives, you slide them in with the blade facing up. Okay, that is totally dangerous. Okay, because God forbid, all right, if you're not watching, the knives, they're meant to go into the sleeve, the pocket that you're sliding it into, and actually that one slide in protects your knife from dulling. So you don't ever want to put the knife face up. Okay, and a little superstition, if you have a magnetic rack in your kitchen, 
like I do in my restaurants and stuff, and magazines, where you put the knives up because I don't like to put them really into any block because I want easy access. Mm -hmm. But if you're an, if you're not a professional cook, you need to be safe and show to your children. You don't want them hanging, no. okay? <laughs> but when they're hanging, okay, a lot of chefs, and this is where some chefs will literally turn around and leave a kitchen. If the knives are, are done where their blades, the tips of the knives are facing the ceiling and the blade is facing that way, Okay, that is bad luck. You don't ever want to see a knife like that. You either turn them all around and get funny looks from your coworkers, okay, and yell that by the chef, okay, because we have a line here, but generally it should all be hung facing down for, again, for your safety, because God forbid if you reach up thinking, you know, you want to make sure you instinctively reach up for the handle, you pull, the knife comes down to your workstation. You don't want to go in like this, reaching up, thinking it's a handle. That's why it's bad luck. You always want to be pointing down, and the blade should be always going toward your right hand. So the minute you grip the knife, you have it in the right position. Okay? Very important. But if anybody, that's totally a misnomer. They need to go in the way they were designed to go into the block. Okay? So, again, how many of you guys bought knives over a lifetime? How many of you are constantly, how many of you buy knives to get dull, you still either keep using them or you throw them out? I'm gonna tell you a quick little story, I promise you this. When we came from the old country, I grew up in, in Lebanon, um, when we came from the old country, this is how you know it was way before post 9-11, okay? And my mother packed her favorite knife and carried it on in her luggage onto the airplane. <laughs> this, I swear to God, I swear to you, okay? And this knife had no handle whatsoever. It's fallen off years ago. It was her favorite knife to make kusa, which is stuffed squash, I had to have the knife. Okay, no handle, so she would literally hold it by the little bit of handle that was left on the knife, the, the metal part that was in the handle. It was like, it was the radiest, ugliest thing. I mean, it was a shit, basically. Okay, <laughs> but she guarded that knife with her life. And do you know what? We have been in this country 35 years, she still has that knife. Every time we move her, it moves with her. So one time she hit it, swear to God, true story, in my father's urn. Oh. oh, because we weren't gonna go look in there. <laughs> yep, that's my mother for you. Now you understand this. <laughs> All right, I went over. I apologize. I know the, the lovely ladies who gave us a beautiful dinner. Thank you again so much. Yeah.